We are a race of inveterate and compulsive newspaper readers, as well as our national dailies. This country produces 48 provincial newspapers every week. For 87 years, every Thursday, week in, week out, the Clonmel Nationalist, South Tipperary's leading newspaper, has rolled off the presses. The Nationalist was started in 1890 by a group of local businessmen. Its original function and purpose was twofold. It acted as a propaganda vehicle for the Home Rule and Land League movements, but of course, then as now, its primary function was to make money. Today, 16,000 copies of the Nationalist are sold every week, and even that figure is inching upwards all the time. This bright new head office and printing works, opened only two years ago, is a fitting monument to the Nationalist success. The uh, EEC business, this uh, direct elections to the European Parliament, and there's a an essay competition for children, he's going around to visit the schools and the mayor is giving him a civic reception. That's the immediate... Uh, well, uh, then situation. some of the lads have stuff to be typed to be... Uh, Every Monday morning, right, Willie Darmody, the national senator, chairs an editorial conference. This is a rather grandiose name, but what in effect is the apportioning of the various assignments or markings among the paper seven journalists. It's invariably pretty routine stuff. Local authority meetings and the various local social events. Uh, the matches, there's the... Uh, League semi final. Yeah. Another Tipperary Over District Council has two good stories. There's the future of the bovine TV office in Tipperary Town, which is a subject of controversy at the moment, where it's rumoured to be transferred to Taurus, and that will be discussed at tonight's uh, Urban District Council. And also, the council is going to take some action as regards the colony of itinerants on the Link Road, so that should give us a couple of stories which would be of interest to our readers. I have a few notes here about pictures. Ted, I heard that the Prairie Hurlers did fairly well. And, yeah, we're we'll getting that from the mix. The there's kind of we'll very the encouraging signs of a revival, is there? We'll get them in the morning. And yet we have pictures of these mm. veterans who did well. Can we let Peggy look after the, the county council mm. today? And yes. Yes. Uh, and tomorrow Mick. night at Tipperary Court on Tuesday, Tyson yeah. Court Wednesday, and the Calicut Show Court on Thursday. Well, you'll be able to cover those. We'll, yes, we'll yes. leave it at that now and look for the moment and take it up again tomorrow morning, please, God. Right, OK. Right, right. Well, there's a, another editorial meeting over for another week, Mr Darmody. Mm -hmm. one, one thing that's, that struck me just listening to all that was that the paper seems to concentrate very much on, on local events. Yeah, sure. Don't have to tell you. It's a local paper. We cover to Prairie South and North and the neighbouring portions of Kilkenny, Waterford, Limerick, and in fact a few uh, f out further away even, and then it does it in addition to our very wide mailing list which goes all over the world. Well tell me this much, if I lived here in Clonmel, why should I buy the Nationalist rather than, than make do with the, with, the, with the three national dailies? What's in it for me? Well of course we endeavour to, uh, to uh, fill the role of a communication medium for the local people. We report the developments and activities and initiatives of the local bodies and the local groups and all aspects of local life. And of course, um, we'd like to give the local bodies a special coverage. I have to, the journalists are specially instructed to lay special emphasis on that because uh, we'd like to have local, a wider and a deeper interest in local affairs, keep the decision making as much as possible out of that out of uh, centralised bureaucracy's hands, you see. Well, really, when, when it all comes down to it all, surely your paper, like most other uh, provincial newspapers, it's just about reporting the, the local courts, the councils, births, marriages, deaths, and, and of course, what's mm. on in the, in the, in the well, local We do that, house. you see, but uh, as well, you see, a glance at our paper will make it apparent what our fundamental aim is, you see. We like to stress the importance of keeping, giving worldly affairs their proper place, but not at the cost of detachment from religion and law and uh, things of the spirit, if you know what I mean. But uh, does the, the Clonmel Nationalist, does it have a, a definite political position? We haven't any political guidelines as such. Well, in, in this year, a general election year, who mm. will you be supporting? Well, I, I let me tell you, you know, for some of us are old enough to go back to the days before the rift in the old Sinn Féin party. And we are still longing for uh, the kind of selfless dedication and unity of purpose that marked those old days, you see. And we'd like to see politics regarded as, uh, I think, what Tom Kettle called them was uh, the state in action. And uh, the name we give to the human conspiracy against hunger and cold and loneliness and ignorance. That's what we'd like to see politics. So whoever comes nearest to that will have our support. Behind every newspaper, 
the faces you never see, the names that are never byline, the printers, the compositors, and the clerical staff. The lifeblood of every newspaper is, of course, its advertising sales. Here in The Nationalist, the sale of 16,000 copies weekly at 14 pence a copy is supplemented by several thousand pounds worth of advertising every week. It all goes into The Nationalist. The social events, the births, deaths and the marriages, and of course, it all helps to bring in the cash. You have the ad for the weekend, yes. haven't you? Six inch double. Six inch double, and that's £23.76. Pence. Right. That's all right, that's bad. Grand. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very much indeed. Bye bye now. Bye. Mr. Murphy, a paper like the, like the Clonmel Nationalist with its history, it must have a, have a profound influence on, on life, on society in this neighbourhood. Yes, well, the fact that we've been around for maybe n almost 90 years is certainly, uh, you know, proves that a, a paper like this has a very valuable function in the life of a society. We've been here, we've seen through the Parnell days, the Land League days, we've been through this, our own, all our own troubles, the 1914 war, the 1939-45 war. We've seen all the problems of life as it was for the people of South Tipperary, with emphasis perhaps on Clonmel because the paper is founded here and printed here. It has uh, taken uh, all cognizance of every sort of uh, operation of the in the life of the people in, in the area, whether it's their importance of their existence through making their livelihood in the days when we had a brewery in Clonmel, when we had a a very big boot factory in Clonmel. Luckily, we still have one, you know. Uh, when we had um, tanneries in many ways, and uh, we still have other industries which are traditional to Clonmel, like bacon curing and bakeries and all that sort of business. Well, in, in the 90, 90 odd years of your existence, has the paper altered much? Has its ingredients, has its influence altered much in that time? Well, I, I wouldn't. I say it's as important now as ever it was. You know, I think this is the important thing about it that it has stayed important in the life of the community, in spite of all the exterior influences on communications. You know that the local provincial newspaper has held its place and in in, in its importance. Well, when you say important, what what do you mean? I mean it's important because it reports to the people all the goings on of the area, it, whether it's dancing or pictures or industry or county council or courts. It's all there. And, uh, you know, if you uh, flash back like uh, in the days when, uh, when uh, things mattered and reading through the old in, uh, minute books of the, of the uh, company, it was very interesting to find that uh, when Parnell was a, a problem in the country, they, they, uh, they didn't, uh, first of all, take sides and then they decided to support Parnell. But in fact, that is pro practically, in fact, not the, o in fact, the only, I would say, political reference of uh, taking sides in the history of the paper. It's, otherwise, it's steered a very even course because they feel that's the right way to run the paper. It's always been felt. Well, it has been suggested to me, with, with all due respects, that, that this is a Fine Gael paper. And, of course, this is a general election year. Which party will your paper be supporting? What will we be doing this year? Well, we'll we will give everybody, a, as far as they provide the cover, they'll get the same cover, one political party versus another. We don't care as long as they're an organised uh, proper elect, uh, elected, properly uh, contr contrived party as a political party, we will give them the same cover for regardless of who they are. The deputy editor and chief sub-editor and the nationalist's most experienced reporter is Brendan Long. Long is the complete all-rounder. In fact, he covers everything from the courts to reviewing the Christmas panto. Brendan, you've been covering the court ca cases here this morning. How typical is this of your, your, your day? This is part and parcel of the um, weekly routine of a local newspaper. Uh, courts, uh, they're a staple diet of, of, of uh, the newspaper, and uh, their district courts held regularly in all the towns around our area. And uh, nothing very sensational uh, usually happens at them. Uh, routine cases, perhaps a bit of vandalism or something like that, uh, traffic cases and things like that. We don't normally get very, very sensational cases, but these are things that have to be covered. There's tremendous interest in what happens in the courts. Well, being a reporter on a provincial newspaper, is it fairly much a, a routine job? Well, most of it is routine. Uh, you know, we, 
these things like scoops and big stories and things, they, they very seldom occur uh, in uh, provincial newspapers. I don't suppose they do in national dailies either very much. It's a painstaking round of uh, local authorities, courts, public meetings, uh, sports fixtures, social events, all of these things. It's pretty routine. Well, the Clanmel Nationalist itself, how, how would you describe it as a newspaper? Well, it would see itself um, as the servant of uh, the community, information in the community, and as a promoter of things that are calculated to enhance the quality of life in, in a community. It would very readily establish itself as a platform for any organisation or group that was trying to do something which was for the good uh, of the area. Clanmel is a very progressive town. It's a town in which there's a tremendous variety of activity. I would say it's a conservative town in uh, the best sense of that word. There's a great sense of tradition here, uh, a great feeling for history, uh, and a great love of the place uh, is shared by uh, the people who live in it. And I think that the paper is essentially reflective of that. Uh, and of course the same goes for, we're not just purely a, a clan mill paper, we have a very wide circulation area. And we have this feeling for the area and reflecting what the community wants to have done. It, it, it would be uh, reflective of the, the community's own view itself.